Oh, I just sent him a text. What? Oh, that's not his new number. What, have you got his new number on you? Huh? Have you got his new number on you? Yeah. I thought I had it. I do have it. Well, good evening, everyone. Let's begin this meeting of the Clovis City Commission. Commissioners, I'd like to welcome you to the meeting this evening. It's nice to be up here all together and not as spread out across the room. Uh, commissioners, again, welcome. I'd like to welcome our city manager, Mr. Howalt, and I see several department heads that have joined us this evening. Welcome to each of you. Welcome to city staff that has joined us. And um, perhaps most importantly, welcome to the public that has joined us this evening. We look forward to hearing from you this evening. Uh, our meeting this evening is open to the public. However, we are limited in the number that we can have in attendance in person. Our meeting is available and viewable on uh, Sudden Link Channel 10, as well as the city's website, which is cityofclovis.org. And it is also streamed on the city's Facebook page. We encourage the public to participate by viewing the meeting in the, the many ways that you can if you're not able to attend in person. And we also encourage uh, the public's involvement in the way of uh, calling in and providing public comment, if you wish. And the number that you would call to do that is 575-763-9200. And if you would like to call in now, we can put you on hold. And um, you'll be ready to share with us when we reach the public comment section. We'll begin tonight's meeting with a prayer and then we will go right into honoring our flags. You would pray with me. <coughs> our Father in heaven, we uh, praise you today for the, many, for the many blessings that you give us freely. God, we thank you for uh, our country and our state. And Lord, uh, as we approach the uh, Easter weekend, Lord, we pray uh, that, that, that families would uh, truly enter into worship, and uh, in doing so, Lord, that we could perhaps put aside our, our disagreements and focus on uh, what we have in common, and that is faith in you. Lord, we ask your guidance this evening as we conduct the city's business, and we thank you for the privilege of doing so. We um, thank you for our wonderful community and ask that you would pour your blessings out here and bring glory and honor to yourself. And Lord, we're especially thankful uh, at this season for the resurrection power of Jesus. And it's in his name that I pray. And amen. amen. Join me in honoring our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico, the Zia symbol of perfect friendship among united cultures. Our meeting is called to order. Ms. Reyes, could we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Levitt? Here. Commissioner Madrid? Here. Commissioner Casaus? Here. Commissioner Elliott? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Bryant? Here. Commissioner Garza? Here. Commissioner Here. Rowley? Here. Commissioner Paula? Here. Mayor Morris? Here. Thank you, Ms. Reyes. Next is approval of the agenda. Commissioners, you've had the opportunity to review the agenda. Are there any changes or rearrangements that you would recommend, or do I hear a motion to approve? Thank you. Second. Um, I'm being flagged down by the, the city manager, Mr. Hobalt. Yes, sir. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners, um, while I'd love to introduce uh, Mr. Russell Hooper to you again this evening, uh, he wasn't able to attend this evening, so um, I think that we've adequately covered his introduction by this point in time. So uh, if we could take that off the agenda, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Okay, great. All right. Well, thanks for that. And um, I'm sorry, remind me who made the motion in second. Motion from Commissioner Casal, second from Commissioner Garza. 
Commissioners, please vote. And the vote is unanimous and the motion is carried. Next is approval of minutes. We need to approve the minutes from the Thursday, March 18th, 2021 meeting. Commissioners, those minutes are in your packet and you've had the chance to review them. Are there corrections or do I hear a motion to approve? If there's no changes with staff, then uh, I'm more for approval. Second. Motion to approve from Commissioner Garza. Second from Mayor Pro Tem Bryant. Please vote. <coughs> and by a vote of eight to zero, the motion is carried. Next is recognition of visitors. Once again, uh, welcome to those of you that have joined us in person. It's great to look out there and, and see folks joining us in person. And so we look forward to hearing from you when we reach the point in the agenda that you're here to share with us about. So then we will move on, commissioners, to proclamations, awards, and presentations. And we have a couple of items scheduled there this evening. The first is presentation of proclamation proclaiming April 2021 as Water Conservation Month in the city of Clovis. And uh, for this, I'll go to our Mayor Pro Tem and also uh, the Chairman of the Water Policy Advisory Board, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bryant. Thank you, Mayor. Before I do the proclamation, uh, I would like to go ahead and read the, a press release that was sent out by Kelsey Knight, which is our marketing director for the city. I think uh, this pretty well says, says exactly what we need to uh, say. It says the city of Clovis is partnering with EPCOR, our municipal water provider, throughout the month of April to promote water conservation in the Clovis area. Clovis water resources are strained, and the Ogallala Aquifer that we rely upon is declining. Water conservation is crucial for our area, and it is important that our community manages and protects our water today to provide better resources for the future. The city of Clovis is committed to addressing our future water needs and is the largest supporter of the U Pipeline project through the Eastern New Mexico Water Utility Authority, which will provide a future sustainable water supply to our area. The city of Clovis supports water conservation and is undergoing several projects to maintain its water resources. These include the affluent water reuse project to use treated wastewater for services like sprinkler systems at city parks, golf courses and schools, and playa preservation efforts. While these projects will make a large impact in the community, the city encourages Clovis citizens to further conserve water in their homes, yards, and everyday lives. Now the proclamation. <clears throat> Whereas water is a basic and essential need of every living creature, and the scarcity of water and the arid climate of the high plains, together with the depletion of the Ogallala Aquifer, have made addressing the water needs of our area a top priority for the city of Clovis. And whereas actions taken to address the need to provide a sustainable future water supply to our area homes and businesses include the youth pipeline project, reuse project, water conservation, and water education programs. And whereas Nas during National Water Conservation Month, the City of Clovis seeks to increase awareness regarding the importance of water conservation by providing the public with information regarding ways to conserve water. And whereas every business, industry, school, and citizen can help make a difference when it comes to conserving water and promote a healthy economy and community by saving water. Now, therefore, I, Mike Morris, Mayor of the City of Clovis, and on behalf of the City Commission, declare the month of April 2021 as Water Conservation Month in the City of Clovis and call upon each citizen and business to help protect our precious resource by practicing water-saving measures and becoming more aware of the need to save water. Mayor, yes. uh, the City of Clovis has invited Mr. Richard Obenshane. I believe he is on the line. He's a water resource analyst with EPCOR Water, and he is here to provide more information regarding EPCOR's water rebate programs uh, this summer. So welcome to the meeting. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. 
Uh, my name is Rick Obenshane, and I'm coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona, where it's a balmy 91 degrees, 7% humidity. <laughs> uh, not to take up a lot of your time, but I, uh, I applaud your recognition of the importance of water and uh, certainly Water Awareness Month nationally and Water Conservation Month in Clovis, New Mexico. Uh, EPCOR has been working on conservation programs in Clovis for many years. We have an established rebate program that includes rebates for low flush toilets, uh, low water use clothes washers, landscape conversion from turf to low water use. And our newest rebate is for uh, rainwater harvesting. Uh, we kicked that off last spring, and of course last spring everything kind of fell apart. So we didn't really get a chance to promote that very well. Uh, hopefully you have heard of it by now, and I know a few people have already taken advantage of it. Uh, rain barrel rebate. Uh, the few facts about rainwater harvesting. An inch of rain on a square foot of roof can generate up to half a gallon of water. So think about uh, 400 square feet of roof, maybe one side of your house. That's 200 gallons of rainfall that you can capture reuse. Now, given that most rain barrels are 50 gallons, what do you do with the other 150? Well, you do a little what I call land shaping and direct the overflow away from your house into trees or a garden or some other place where we can take advantage of that rain. So it's a, it's a good program and I hope uh, uh, citizens of Clovis will look into that. Uh, also want to promote our conservation kits that I'm, uh, I'm responsible for. There's an audit kit which teaches homeowners how to audit their water use inside and outside their house. Uh, teaches them to check how to check their toilets for leaks, which is a very common problem. It also teaches them how to read their water meter so they can check for uh, a leak the meter in the house, etc. So, a very useful kit. The other kit is called a retrofit kit, and it includes uh, low flow um, shower head, a low flow sink, a kitchen sink attachment, and two bath faucet aerators, all low flow, and some other useful information. Uh, last year, I started including a little rain gauge in both of these kits uh, just to follow up on the rainwater harvesting. So I'm happy to include that. Uh, I sent a huge box of materials to the city office a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I hope it wasn't too crazy heavy for anyone there. It was uh, a good 50 pounds of materials. So <laughs> help you make a good use of those. Uh, future plans. Um, the only really public education we do in Clovis is at the schools through our H2O Magic Show. And that's brought to you by uh, Richard Steele, who is a professional, he's a professional magician. Uh, his livelihood is doing trade shows and conventions. He's been doing school shows for us for about 10 years now. Uh, the teachers love it. The kids love it. But I think there's maybe other programs that we could get going in Clovis to educate the adult population. So if you would, think about what you might like to see in more education programs. And I will certainly work on my end to get those set up. Another future thing we want to do, and we've been planning this for a couple of years, and of course the pandemic put the kibosh on all of that, is a water carnival for Clovis. 
Uh, and what we envision is a carnival, a family event at one of your lovely parks. Uh, the main attraction would be the water magician doing live shows. We would also have stations around the area uh, presenting activities from uh, the project WET curriculum, which your school teachers are very familiar with. And, you know, of course, other bounce houses and watering stations and things like that. Maybe a donkey booth that might be fun. So we're working on that, and with the pandemic, we pushed that back uh, to either next spring or next fall. So we'll be in communication with you about that and get on board with the planning for that. So think about what you might want in additional adult education programs. And any questions you have on water conservation, uh, need resources, you need materials, please don't hesitate to contact me at conservation at epcor.com. I will get right back to you. Thank you so much for having me this evening. Well, thank you, Mr. Overshane. We appreciate uh, what you've had to share with us here, and, and we will think about the, the offer. Uh, and uh, looks like we have Mr. Mark Warta from EPCOR also joining us this evening. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, uh, uh, Rick, thank you uh, for volunteering to do this. It was uh, uh, very, very well done. Uh, just to kind of add to, to what uh, Rick was saying is on those rebates, uh, they're, they're all available. Uh, they'll continue to be available as long as there's funds available to fund them. And the, all the information as well as the applications for those rebates can be found on our website at fcore.com, as well as a, a ton of good conservation information on there uh, talking about watering, uh, watering <coughs> schedules, you know, don't, don't water when it's windy outside. You know, if you use a manual or if you use a, an automatic timer for your sprinklers to adjust them manually, should you have, an, uh, we finally get some rain, you know, to make sure you go out there and go ahead and put that in the off position so it doesn't come on. Uh, and, and just a lot of really, really good information in regards to that. Um, so, you know, that resource is always available. Uh, of course, we're doing our radio ads, so we'll, we do a number of radio ads uh, throughout the summer uh, on radio. Uh, uh, water conservation and uh, a lot of direct mailers, bill inserts and things of that nature to remind people about water conservation. So and with that, I'll uh, take any questions. Yeah, I appreciate that, Mr. Huerta. Any questions, Commissioner? Yes. Commissioner. Hey, Mark. This has nothing to do with, well, it does have to do with conservation. What's that water running down 21st? Uh, so that's probably part of our uh, pipeline project we got going on right now. They're at the kind of uh, hydrostatic testing and then disinfection and sampling stage, so they're having to do some flushing. So okay. that's what you're seeing. Okay. I was just wondering, there was a lot of water running down that 21st. Yep. After I washed my car, then I went through that water. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark, thank you for the partnership that uh, between the city and the EPCOR. Uh, you all provide a lot of information on conservation, and it's definitely appreciated. Uh, just want to mention real quick, uh, we do have informational packets and activities for children that's going to be available at uh, City Hall and also at the library. So anybody would like some more information can stop by, again, by City Hall or by the library to pick some things up as well. Thank you. Well, Mr. Huerta, Mr. Hey. Obershane, thank you. Yes, Commissioner. Casals. I just want to ask Mark a question. Where do you get the water barrels for the harvesting, or do you just find one somewhere? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if there are any retailers here. If, if anywhere, I would say it would probably be Lowe's Home Improvement would be your best chance. Uh, but again, those rebates are for I mean, the I would hate to see all kinds of barrels. Yes. I think the total rebate, and Rick, Rick can correct me if I'm wrong, is a, for a, a total cap of $500, but that would include for the purchase of the rain barrel, uh, the gutter system, the downspout to get the water to the rain barrel, uh, any kind of concrete that you pour uh, to set the barrel on or, or have a professional come and do that work for you. Um, so uh, it, it's a, 
fairly new program, and, and, and we have had a few people already take advantage of it, but all that information is available on our website. And as far as local providers for the Wayne Catch Barrels, I'm, I'm not real <coughs> sure on that. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for these gentlemen? No, thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Mr. Rick. Huerta. Thanks again, Mr. Obershane. Thanks for joining our meeting this evening. Appreciate that very much. And Mayor Pro Tem, thank you for bringing the proclamation and, and uh, telling us about April being Water Conservation Month. Thank very you. important. Next, under proclamations, awards, and presentations, we have um, a presentation that, or a couple of presentations that are always a delight to do. Uh, presentation of clocks to distinguished supervisor of the quarter, John Bradley from the Clovis Fire Department, and distinguished line employee of the quarter, David Sandoval, Clovis <coughs> Police Department, for the period December 2020 through February 2021. Ms. Burroughs, would you like to advise? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners. I'd just like to uh, thank the, the Distinguished Employee Award Program Nominating Committee and Commissioner Casaus, uh, you particularly for uh, attending on behalf of the Commission this quarter and for coming and helping with the grab-and-go lunch. Um, I think we have uh, Chief Ford here and Captain Tayers um, and uh, Chief Nolan and uh, I think Deputy Chief Dixon's here too to talk about their recipients. Thank you. Wonderful. Who, who's going first, gentlemen? <laughs> Looks like it's Chief Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner, that's the part I got up to say. So I, wanted, I do want to say it is great being able to see you all again like this. Uh, not spread out. I wasn't I wasn't sure where y'all were. Uh, with that said, I'm here for the supervisor of the quarter, uh, John Bradley. But at the nominating committee, I could not make that. And uh, Deputy Chief Dixon did speak on behalf, and uh, and we were able to maintain an award for uh, acting the chief, uh, acting battalion chief John Bradley, uh, who got that award. So with that said. I'm going to ask uh, Chief Dixon to come up and speak. And uh, John, would you join him up here? And then I just do the fadeaway. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Welcome, Deputy Chief Dixon. Glad to have you here. Uh, good evening, distinguished guests, honorable mayor, mayor pro tem, commission. My name is Byron Dixon. I've been on board here as a deputy fire chief since November. 2020, so this is a first for me to present before you all, but it is an honor to be able to do such a, an event for John Bradley. I was asked to present in terms of the nominating committee for John Bradley, so I'm continuing on with the presentation with regards to presenting to you all for tonight's presentation. So that being said, just a little background, John Bradley is a B-shift member uh, on our closed city fire department. He's been on the department since 04, so he's a 17-year veteran and member. He's been a member of the paramedic team, so he's a paramedic also, as well as a hazmat team, and a peer fitness uh, advisor. So in other words, he keeps members of our department in shape. He's a lieutenant. Uh, he's in acting capacity right now as a battalion chief. And one of the things that struck me about um, Mr. Bradley is simply this. Through the last couple of months, as I'm trying to get this storming Norman conforming, since I'm a new member of the department, I encourage communications. And communications and such is moving our department forward. So for the first couple of months, um, Lieutenant Bradley, Acting Battalion Chief Bradley, has been really, relatively quiet up until the last month. <laughs> the last month, he showed me all of the passion he had that he's for the fire department and for the citizens, thus serving our community. So that being said, on behalf of the fire department, I'd like to present to you John Bradley. Thank you, John. Uh, big speech. Oh, big speech. Oh, 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 don't big speech. run off. <laughs> <laughs> He's a man of few words. Come on, John. He said I, he said I was quiet. Okay. <laughs> I to start off with our meeting that we had the other day to get John going. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you take the picture. He was just, he was just <laughs> trying to take care of Take the place of the chief. <laughs>
Good job. Thank you, John. All right. If I'm tracking this right, I think we're going to hear from Chief Ford now. <laughs> Chief Ford, good Thank to you, see Mayor. you. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner, appreciate you. I uh, appreciate you letting us talk. Our subject that was nominated was Detective David Sandoval. Detective Sandoval has been with us for the past seven years. He began working, or he worked in this area originally as a DOD U.S. Air Force police officer before he came to join us. He's a member of our SWAT team. He's also one of our defensive tactic instructors. Uh, he was promoted in 2016. He transferred to investigations in 2017, and he's been a very vital member of our investigations group. As you most of you know, with some of the people we've lost, some of the issues we've had in trying to retain, he has really picked up and done a lot to assist in not just only the regular detective side, but he's also helped in the narcotic side. So he's been doing some, a lot of dual duty and picking up a lot of <coughs> extra cases and extra investigations in both areas, which can be very challenging, may not seem like it, but trying to hold the regular caseload and then also assist in that area is definitely a challenge. So we've really appreciated him doing that. Um, he's done a great job in everything he's done, and he's really stepped up in, in keeping the department moving forward, which is something we're always trying to do. Also with me is Deputy Chief Rice, his division commander, Captain Tejas. Well, I will allow to come speak also a little bit about him because he's actually like, gets to see him every day. So, Captain Tejas, Peck Samuel. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> ooh, I don't. Ooh, I don't know about that. Welcome, Captain. Captain. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, and distinguished guests. Um, just a little bit about Detective Sandoval. Uh, as as all of you are aware, uh, over the last couple of years, we've been really, really working on keeping our staffing up, and staffing is a struggle in law enforcement everywhere right now. And because it's a struggle, we have to work continuously and come up with new and, and creative ways to keep everything flowing and, and flowing smoothly without any hitches. So since I've come into our detective division uh, back in March or February of last year, Detective Sandoval has been extremely helpful in, in making sure that we keep things operating. Uh, not only in the fact that he's, he's carrying a heavy caseload, but in the fact that he's taken a leadership role with my detectives. He's helping and training new detectives. And then he's filling spots that wherever we need help. Uh, recently, we've needed some help with our narcotics division, and he's been more than happy to jump up and, and step right in. A lot of the reason that he was a good choice in my mind for this award is because a lot of people don't understand just what we're dealing with in law enforcement right now. I've been in law enforcement this year is my 30th year doing this. And in 30 years, you might see an assault on a police officer every five to six years from, from the time I started. Over the last year, we've had three vehicle pursuits where officers have been shot at in this region in the last year. In July of last year, Detective Sandoval was out. He had been called out to investigate an incident. While he was out, he came across a vehicle that had broke a law. And he went to stop the vehicle. And during that pursuit, the subject that was driving started shooting at him. And never once did that incident waver his performance at work or the person that he is. And he stands tall. He comes to work every day. He comes with a bright attitude, and he comes ready and willing to work. He's given up a lot of his personal life to serve our community. And I appreciate that, because that's a lot. Sure, we make a little extra money when we, we're out working extra. But most people don't realize what we actually give up, the time with our families, the time with our kids, birthdays and holidays. And he does it gladly. And for that, I think he deserves this award. I'm proud to see him get this award, and I look for many years working with him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speech, speech.
Always a pleasure to get to recognize uh, outstanding and employees of the city and appreciate uh, both of you men. Thank you very much. Commissioners, that brings us to receipts of petitions and communications. And uh, as Mr. Howalt said, uh, at the very beginning of the meeting, we were going to talk about Russell Hooper there, our new parks director. Uh, but he couldn't be here this evening. We're, we're certainly uh, glad to have him on board. I've had the chance to meet him. I think we all have an uh, out, outstanding guy and excited to have him here. Uh, folks, this is the point in the agenda. If you're here to simply share with us, uh, you're welcome to do that now. And I, I see my friend uh, Rock back there, and I know that, that he has something to share with us this evening. So we'd give you the floor, sir, if you'd like. If you state your name and address for the record, please. Sure, it's Rock Rages. No, Dan Borwick. Uh, my address? Yes, please. Uh, 2317 Newman Drive in Clovis. Thanks, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Commissioners. Yesterday I was doing a presentation to a group here locally about story changers. This mom approached me afterwards, and I could tell she was a little distressed, not because she's a mom, but I could just see it. <laughs> And she was telling me about her daughter who um, in this pandemic and lockdown has suffered severe anxiety disorder where she doesn't have friends over. She doesn't go out and play with her friends. She wears gloves and a mask. Anywhere she goes, the moment she comes back into her house, she takes all her clothes off. She jumps in the shower and gets cleaned up every time. It's disrupted their family. She went to school, started school. And the moment she gets home from school, she jumps in the shower, changes her clothes, and gets clean. She had a birthday party two weeks ago. She told mom, I don't want any friends over. She won't hug her mom, hug her dad, hug her family. She doesn't do that because she's scared. And she's 10. She's the fifth grader. And that bothers me. And I could see in, her, in the mom's eyes despair. Um, she didn't know what to do. And... Um, we have a problem. Our community's in trouble. And I'm here sounding the alarm to you, our leaders. I'm the executive director of Story Changers. It's a nonprofit my wife and I started, and I want to invite you into a story of community transformation that begins with you, begins with me, begins with us here in the community. At Story Changers, we know you know this too, that kids in our community, when I say kids, I'm talking about elementary, middle school, high school, college. Kids in our community are not developing the social and emotional leadership muscles, I call them muscles, that are necessary for success in the real world of adulthood. Because we're not raising kids. We already have kids. Kids are here. We're raising adults, and they are not ready. And this muscle atrophy, I call it, leads to a tsunami, and this tsunami is here. It was here pre-pandemic, but man, it's here right now. And it leads to isolation, depression, anxiety disorder, self-harm is up 300% among 13 to 18 year olds. And it is crushing our kids. It's crippling our families like this mama, and it's burying our community. And that bothers me. As a dad, I have a daughter who's in her 20s, and she struggles with anxiety disorder. As many parents in here can attest to their families. And so we're owning this problem. We're partnering with schools, families, local businesses, individuals to provide a, a pretty unique and creative, innovative, um, in-school leadership development program that does a couple things. It equips kids number one, and students, 
And then it unleashes them into the community to demonstrate, not just declare, but to demonstrate for, I believe, our critical muscles that everybody needs to develop, not just kids, but we all do. And just four, self-awareness, empathy, critical thinking, and grit. In other words, we want kids and students to be uncommon at how they lead themselves. We want kids to be shocking, to shock the crap out of people by how they serve others and how they serve their community. We want kids to be eye-catching and how they solve real problems. Not Fortnite problems, not Minecraft problems, but real community problems in their school or in the community. And then we want kids to be freakish, just freak people out by how they bounce back. When setback comes, failure comes, when life hits hard, that they bounce back. I've been serving kids, teenagers, and young adults for 35 years, 23 in here, here in this community. And I'm convinced more than ever that leadership growth, the leadership growth mindset, and grit make your life better and make you better at life. Making your life better is about changing your story, but making you better at life, it's about changing someone else's story, about the you beside you. It's about changing the story of your school, your team, your family, your community. So imagine all of us coming together, schools, families, local businesses, working together to be the one who changes the story, stories in our community. Because if you can change the story of a student who changes the story of a school, they will change the story of a community and transform it. And here it is, transform it from a buried community to a booming community. That's what I want. I know that's what you want. You want a booming, thriving, loving, empathetic, problem-solving, bouncing back community. If you change a kid, you transform a community from buried to booming. So here's what we're doing with Story Changers. That was the why. Here's what we're doing. We started Story Changers back in March at Marshall as an after-school program with about 60 students. And then COVID hit. And then I had to restructure my time with our ballet studio. We had to open up one in meal shoes. So my time is sucked up after school, so I couldn't do that. So we restructured. So we're going in as an in-school leadership development program. And we're starting, we're starting in the fall. We're launching at Clovis Christian School and Melrose with all their middle school and high school students. About 200 students will be involved on a weekly basis with Story Changers. So I'm just out there. I'm raising money, so I'm not going to pass an offering bucket right now, but what I will say is I'm asking for a little bit from a lot of people. I'm asking for just $10 a month from individuals and families and $500 a year from local businesses to come together, because you just never know. You may never know. We may never know what or who hangs in the balance of our decision to jump in and to get involved. And lastly, I'm really excited about getting into schools, by the way. It's going to be, it's going to be a blast. There is a universal sign to know if someone needs encouragement. It's all over this room. We miss it because everybody needs encouragement. You need it. Everybody needs it. And we miss it. This universal sign. Do you know what the universal sign is to know if someone needs encouragement? The universal sign to know if someone needs encouragement is if that person is breathing. And with that, I'll stand for any questions or I will stand for any encouragement because God knows I need it. Does anybody have any questions what we're doing? Thanks Mr. Borwick. Uh, appreciate you sharing this with us commissioners. Any comments or questions? I think, so thanks for what you do. I think it's important thank you. and uh, it's definitely much needed right now. Yes thank I you. totally agree with. Yep. Thanks Thanks for your Get heart. Get ready for the radio. We're, we, we're, we're partnering with Duffy and the radio and we got four high schoolers from Melrose going to jump in Every, they're going to do PSAs, we're calling radio bumps, because I want our community to hear the voices of teenagers, because most teens don't listen to the radio, right? But you do, adults do. And so they want to come in and they want to serve their community because parents and adults have higher anxiety than teenagers right now, based on a study I read. They're struggling. So we get those teenagers out there with their voice giving little leadership principles and practices in the community, so be listening for them on the radio. They're going to shock you, shock the crap out of us. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Rock. Thank you. Commissioner, did you have something to share under communications? Yes, Mayor. The city of Clovis is going to have the great American cleanup to keep America beautiful. Saturday, May the 8th, 2021, from 8 to 12. 
please visit cityofclovis.org to sign up or call 575-763-9654. And please sign up. Please volunteer to help us clean up this city. Everybody can sign up. Bring clubs, Air Force Base, any, any volunteer. We really need you out there. So that's all I have. Do you have anything clear? Um, no, thank you. <laughs> Covered it well, Commissioner okay, Madrid. Thank, thank you. you. Oh. oh, yes, Misty Bertrand. First volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Misty Bertrand, 1517 Ashton Street. Uh, Mayor Morris, Mayor Pro Tem Bryant, commissioners, colleagues, and friends, thank you for allowing me a few moments of your time. I am extremely happy to report that your Clovis Civic Center is open. Yay. So as soon as we, um, Curry County was in the green level, we were open to 25% capacity. We did host our first in-house event last night. Um, it was quite successful. Um, we had a great time with all the folks that came out. Um, after last night's event and after actually setting the ballroom after not having an event for a year, we are looking to um, reevaluate what the capacity level is. So we are working with um, Captain Silvers of the Clovis Fire Department. Um, we've had some requests for some larger events. Um, so we are hoping to um, re um, submit and recreate our reopening plan. We've had two versions of that just based on all of the changes that have happened during this pandemic. Um, currently, we are, um, we can fit 240 tables, socially distanced, more than six feet apart, seating for six um, in a half ballroom, meaning that we could um, potentially hold 240 folks in a full ballroom. But again, I'm waiting um, to get permission from the Clovis Fire Department and Captain Silvers on that. Again, we're super excited. We're hoping we get to go to Turquoise next week, which would bring us to 33% capacity. Anyone who's interested in booking or hosting an event at the Clovis Civic Center, you can reach us at 575-935-5000. And then um, finally, before I step down, I would like to introduce um, two guests that we do have um, <clears throat> online. They're from my Spectra leadership team. So <clears throat> we do have um, Regional Vice President Rebecca Bolton on the line and then also um, Vice President for Business Development and Client Relations, um, Tom McDonald. So they're here as well. If you have any questions for myself or them, uh, we'll stand for those now. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Ms. Bertrand, for sharing that. And thanks for, for hanging in there. And, and uh, we're excited to see some things happening at the Civic Center. Thank you for what you do. Any questions or comments, Commissioners? Nope. Misty, thank you. thank you for smiling again. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Gonzalez. She's always smiling. That's a good thing. Excellent. I guess my wife went down there to that deal last night, and she had a lot of fun. They said it was a lot of fun. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. We had, um, if, you, if you're interested, we had our um, Bunko event last night. So Bunko is a dice rolling game. Um, previously, prior to COVID, we were having about 100 folks come out. We had 28 people last night, which we thought was fantastic for our first event for us to be able to see what we could do in a socially distanced capacity. Um, like I said, it was a phenomenal evening. Um, we were able to generate, I had it in my pocket, um, $765 revenue. So that's the most revenue we've been able to create from an in-house event. So we're super excited for that. And we're just going to continue to work to bring in events um, to decrease that deficit to the city um, that the Civic Center creates. So thank you again for your time. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Ms. Regan. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Commissioners. I'm going to feed on her excitement for just a moment. <laughs> um, as, as you all know, on Monday a press release was issued and Senior Services is now able to host some outdoor activities. Um, so I don't know who's more excited, staff or our seniors. Um, so today we hosted our first event. It was Parking Lot Bingo. And it was scheduled to begin at 1.30. At 12.45, we had seniors pulling up in their favorite spots in the parking lot, so, so they, are, they are very excited. Um, parking lot bingo is um, you pull up, staff will greet you, we give you a bingo card, you stay in your vehicle. Um, IT has helped us get a um, transmitter, so um, we call bingo and it transmits onto the radio. 
So um, it you know keeps the seniors safe and in their vehicles. Um, and like I said, they're they're so excited. Um, we have a we have a whole month of events that we have scheduled for outdoors. Um, tomorrow we are going to be doing at 2 p.m. We're going to be doing um, first ever tea time. And so um, during the time that we were actually open, one of the one of the highlights of the day is we had we had one of our seniors who is an English lady and she loves to make tea for everybody. And so, um, so she would make tea, and everybody would just sit around and visit. And it's not Miss Claire, I promise, but, but she, loves just to, she loves to come to our tea time as well. And, and Miss Claire, you are invited tomorrow at 2 p.m., please. Um, so we're going to sit out on the patio, and we're going to have tea and just socialize. Um, as um, Rock Ray just was saying um, about um, the, you know, the, the problems that everybody is having with isolation and depression, um, we have so many of that as well. So many seniors call and they're, excuse me, they're so anxious to get back into um, just seeing people. Um, you know, they've, they've been shut in for so long as well. Um, but other activities that we're continuing to do um, virtually, we are doing exercise every day. Um, we have a small group of seniors, but as soon as the weather warms up, we plan to um, get out into the parking lot or the patio and, and do some more some more exercises. Um, and then, like I said, as the, as the weather warms up, we are just, um, we're gonna maybe have some cornhole and horseshoes and bocce ball and just different things. Anything that we can do outside to social distance and, um, and just get our seniors back in, back into the centers. So with that in, I stand for any questions. Well, that's fantastic. We're glad to hear about that. And Thank you for sharing that this evening. Any questions or comments, commissioners? No, just thank you. Oh, Much thank needed. Claire, do you have your hat ready? Certainly. <laughs> Barbara, when do you see the uh, meal site reopening in a limited number? Anytime soon? We're waiting for the governor's orders on that. As soon as as soon as she opens it up and we're able to, to do that, then then um, we'll look at it at that time. And that's as, um, as well as any of the senior centers um, Baxter Curran, the um, Senior Services, and La Casa is all just waiting for governor orders to um, to lift so that so that we can reopen in person. Great. Well, thanks for what okay. you do. Yes. Thank you. And you are all invited to tea time tomorrow. It's not just Claire. So 2 o'clock on the patio at Friendship Senior Center. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Regan. Anyone else wishing to provide uh, public comment or communications this evening? Seeing none, commissioners, let's move on to the consent agenda. This item is placed on the agenda so that the commission, by unanimous consent, can designate those routine agenda items they wish to be approved or acknowledged by one motion. If any proposal does not meet with the approval of all of the commission members, or if a citizen so requests, that item will be heard when reached under the regular agenda. Commissioners, just five items on the agenda this evening, uh, or on the consent agenda, rather. The first is the motion to place. The fifth is the uh, motion to approve or acknowledge. So I'll read two through three. Item two, request for approval to award RFP 21-0104-01 Civic Center Management to Spectra. Item three, request for approval to apply for and accept the 2021-2022 New Mexico Clean and Beautiful Keep America Beautiful grant. Item four, request for approval to reallocate capital improvement funds. Unless you have comments or questions on these items, I would entertain a motion to place the indicated items on the consent agenda by unanimous vote. Mayor, I make a motion to go ahead and place the items on the consent agenda. Thank second. you. Motion by Commissioner Madrid, second from Commissioner Garza. Commissioners, please vote. And it is unanimous. The motion is carried. Now, do I have a motion to approve or acknowledge all items on the consent agenda? So move. Second. second. Motion from Commissioner Casaus. Second from Commissioner Rowley. Commissioners, please vote. And the vote is unanimous and the motion is carried. Thank you, Commissioners. Next, introduction and adoption of resolutions and ordinances. 
one item there this evening, and it is request for approval of introduction of an ordinance relating to the International Property Maintenance Code, amending section 15.14.020 and creating new section, new code section, 15.14.030. Zero, relating to the removal and abatement of dangerous buildings and debris. And Mr. Howalt, can you advise on this? Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. You know, I, first I just want to say it's, it's fantastic to have each of you sitting back up at the dais and staff being back over uh, in, our, in our respective uh, positions. And as I think back on this last year and this time last year, I remember the mayor sitting up at the dais all by himself and Ms. Burroughs and I shuffling, trying to figure out technology out in the hallway um, as we were trying to work our way through, through this pandemic and how far we've actually come um, to address not only technology needs, but addressing the pandemic, pandemic and, and doing what we can as a community to, uh, to offset and, and uh, try and move away from the pandemic itself. Um, in regards to the, to the item in front of you this evening, as the city of Clovis has continued to look at ways to improve our serv services, um, one of the things that we started to want to address is looking at our municipal code and ways that impact our citizens and the codes that we have in place. Um, one of those codes is in relation uh, to uh, dangerous buildings, and we currently follow the um, International Property Maintenance Code. Uh, what we have come to recognize is that the process in which we have to go through um, to abate the buildings and declare them dangerous is very cumbersome. And so what we wanted to do was be able to give our uh, building safety department and our code enforcement officers and inspectors the tools that they need in order to do uh, their jobs efficiently and effectively. And so Mr. Morris, uh, we set him out on the, the task of trying to review uh, what other options and tools that we may have out there. And along the way, uh, he actually discovered in state statutes uh, another mechanism in which we could abate dangerous buildings. And so the item in front of you this evening is a new approach to how we do business uh, and how our building safety does business in regards to the dangerous and abatement of buildings. And so um, I'm actually going to turn it over to Mr. Morris and let him walk you through a little bit of the details of what's being proposed this evening. Great. Thank you. Thank Mr. You, Morris. Mayor. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Commissioners. So just briefly, the, the current code, I think, is problematic for legal reasons and practical reasons. Uh, some of the legal reasons I've discussed with you, there's contradictory notice provisions, uh, there's confusing language about time limits, um, and then, of course, there's an appeals process it talks about which no longer exists. So uh, it's been outdated and in need of... Is that better? It's outdated and in need of some restructuring. Uh, practically, also, as you've seen, at least since I've been here, it takes a long time to get from point A to point B, and there's a lot of hoops we have to jump through. And so the, uh, the state statute, when I started reading it, it seemed like it was a much more streamlined process, and, and I think the biggest practical benefit is that it also expands the type of structures that we can abate. You know, the old code was we're really hamstrung to dangerous buildings that are incapable of repair, which uh, left a lot of dilapidated and ruined and dangerous structures uh, that we couldn't abate because we were, we were limited in our scope. And so the state statute that applies to non-home rule municipalities actually allows a much broader interpretation of what we can abate. It's a much quicker timeline, and it actually starts with the commission draft a resolution we serve them with that resolution, and then the clock starts in a much quicker process. So I did make a few changes that I think I outlined to you all from the state statute after meeting with Justin and, and building safety. We actually added another method of service to protect property owners. Um, so now there's three methods of service. We extended a timeline by five days. Um, I think that, oh no, there was a, a gap that we had seen where the state statute, you know, if you respond within a certain amount of time, you can then work with the city and agree to abate the structure yourself, and the city will give you a certain timeline, and um, that goes forward that way. Uh, there was no repercussion or no uh, discussion in the state statute about what happens if you fail to adhere to the timeline or if you fail to start work when you say you're going to start work. And so I think we've closed that gap in our ordinance by 
allowing us to give you notice that, hey, you didn't start when you said you were going to start, or you didn't do the work like you said you were going to do it, and if we give you notice five days after that, we can go ahead and correct the problem. Uh, it leaves the same ability for us to um, charge a lien to a property for our work if we're forced to abate the structure, and so overall I think it's a good thing. I, you know, we're in the process of revamping a lot of our other uh, public nuisance and abatement type ordinances, but I think this one, I'm glad we're moving this one forward now, uh, especially after the strategic planning session and the comments of the commission. So uh, I'd be happy to answer any further questions if you have. Yeah, Mr. Morris, thank you for, for the work that you've put into this. Um, I'm, I'm excited to, to see this brought forward uh, as something for us to consider approving because uh, as you just referenced there at the end of your comments, uh, beautification and you know, cleaning up uh, our community is, is one of the priorities identified in our strategic planning session that we just finished. Um, and, and that, and we're all just generally aware that uh, there's, some, there's something wrong with how we're handling this because of how, how difficult it is and how long it takes to, to deal with uh, a property that is in a dangerous uh, condition. So. I'm excited to see this. It, it seems to me that this would give us, uh, commissioners, it would give us the ability to um, take swift action when, uh, when there is a problem and uh, give, give the uh, tools to the city to take care of these things. What comments or questions do you have, commissioners? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, just to remind uh, the public, this is a, an introduction, so they have, the public has 30 days to look at these and they have any comments they can uh, come to us for comments and uh, but I think this is something that we uh, need it and it's needed uh, and so we can clean up the, our city thanks for that Commissioner Garza appreciate that others mayor I do have one question under section 3 uh, a uh, building or structure ruin damage covered with ruined rugged wreckage or debris. Does that wreckage apply to automobiles? Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioner, so that's a good question. The uh, state statute, when we were um, discussing this, this matter and, and looking towards adopting the resolution, the question came up about a lot of those definitions. What is rubbish? What is wreckage? What is debris? I think the state statute intentionally doesn't define those. Um, and we do right now, part of what we're doing is we have separate ordinances for the cleanup of junk automobiles. And so when we're, we're starting with this one, but then we're going to make sure that they don't overlap when we go through and correct and modify the rest of our ordinances. So I, to answer your question, no, I don't think that's going to include automobiles. What we're going to do is have a whole separate, more specific ordinance for automobiles. And then ultimately, just to kind of tag along with that, you know, it's the commission... You're the fact-finding body, and so uh, we chose not to define those and to use the standard uh, definition that, that most people have for those terms and the standard dictionary definition. And so when you're debating whether or not to abate a structure, you know, there, there may be some discussion about what is ruins, rubbish, wreckage, or debris, and that would be, of course, what, what's up for you guys to determine at, the, at that time. So uh, there would be a way to add a definitional section, but I think after some thought and consideration, we decided to follow more of the state statute. Okay, thank you. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morris, do you, I, Mayor Pro Tem, I, were, you, were you finished? Did that yes. answer? I, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I, like, I like your question, and it made me think, uh, do, you, do you feel good about, um, you mentioned that there are other, other codes that, that we have to deal with, um, uh, junked automobiles and, and things like that. Uh, are we going to be able to deal with that as well? I mean, if this isn't going to do it, do you feel good about us being able to get to that place as well? Yes, sir. So I think uh, there's public nuisance statutes that right now is sort of the broad umbrella is public nuisance. And then right the way we have the structure now, junk automobiles are actually an ordinance that we have currently. Uh, but what we're going to do when we're updating them is make sure that they're not overlapping. And so building safety isn't confused about well, do I cite them for junked automobiles or do I cite them under uh, this ordinance? And so we, uh, that's one thing that we're working towards is making sure we have a set of specific ordinances for each offense from graffiti to weeds to junked automobiles to debris to structures. So they should all be covered by the time that we are done. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Morris. So, um, 
Commissioner Garza's point was was a good one is that this is uh, introduction and, and we'll have 30 days or the public would have 30 days to share with us on this uh, just another thought that I have though because I do see this being being approved and I see this being good for our city uh, when this commission uh, votes uh, to secure a building what's the timing how long could it take before that would happen so the the quickest timeline would be so first of all let's say we have a commission meeting you know on a thursday and we could, if we got it on the agenda i guess by friday at noon or monday at the latest you know if the building safety notices a, a building on a friday or even on the weekend or even early on a monday if we get it on the agenda for the thursday meeting and the resolution passes at the thursday meeting then there's 15 days and if they don't respond within 15 days of being served now there's three methods of service we have to mail which try to serve them personally and if we can we have to mail it and then publish it so assuming we got them served right away after the resolution was passed it could be as little as 15 days after the meeting and maybe even as little as 20 days after the building was identified and brought in front of you guys okay. yeah. thank you for that and the, the city's process for securing a building is to um, ask for bids from contractors or do we have city staff that can accomplish that, those tasks? Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Uh, we do both. Um, so we have utilized contract labor in the past for uh, securing buildings. Um, we're also currently working with and looking at the um, functions of our environmental response team, our ERT team. And so it, it, trying to analyze whether or not um, having the tools and equipment necessary for them to go in and to secure buildings as well is something that is, is under consideration. But we have done both methods. Got it. Thank you, Mr. Howell. I think, uh, I think continuing to, to look at the option where we could have our ERT team do that is, I mean, obviously going to be the most efficient because if we agree or if this commission votes to secure a building and, and then we have to wait on bids from contractors, and you know, it's just it, if, if we could get really efficient at cleaning things up if if we had city staff to do it. Yeah, and and certainly, and and when it comes to to bidding out those jobs, it depends on the size of and scope of the work itself. So depending on what the actual dollar amount may be, um, we do have contractors that are job order contractors um, that can go out and do that work for us, and we would not have to receive bids for them. So it's just would depend be dependent upon the size of the job itself. Thanks for that, Mr. Howalt. And I got us a little bit off subject talking about, you know, the, the, the uh, application or the implementation of this and, and rather than uh, the, the introduction of this ordinance itself. Any other questions, uh, commissioners? No, I just uh, want to make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Garza. Second. And a second from Commissioner Casaus. Vote, please. And the vote is unanimous, and the motion is carried. Thank you. Um, nothing to deal with under unfinished business uh, this evening, so we'll move on to new business. Four items there this evening. The first is request for approval of legal review of the Clovis City Code by Muni Code. And it says here that Ms. Burroughs is going to advise. Perhaps Mr. Howell can advise. I can do it in my best English accent. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Commissioners. And this kind of, the previous item kind of leads into this item. Um, it's something that, that, like I mentioned, we're looking at over all of our uh, municipal codes that we currently have place. And as Mr. Morris mentioned, you know, we're wanting to make sure that all of our public nuisance ordinances all align with each other from an, from a, implementation from our code enforcement officers to make sure that they're working through the same process. The other thing that we're looking at is whether or not our codes um, are even applicable anymore in reference to state statutes. Um, the state statutes were recompiled in 1978. The original ones were, I believe, in 1953. Um, and we actually still have references to the codes from back in 1953. Um, we have references in our codes referring to dance halls. Um, and so we felt it was time to go in and start cleaning those up some. 
Um, and so uh, MuniCode is a company that we work with that actually um, compiles and uh, publishes our code on the website itself. And uh, they also offer services to go through and review your code and look for anything that's contradictory to state statutes. Um, and so we figured it'd be efficient to utilize their services to go through it, check it for those items, while we're going through the same process, looking and trying to identify items uh, that we need to better align within the code. Um, the fiscal impact for this process is $7,050 um, plus gross receipts tax, um, and it would come out of fund 01-0102-62430. And uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have unless you ask me for what fund um, that stands for. <laughs> and Leanne will tell you. And Leanne will tell you. <laughs> yeah, we'll get Leanne to, to pitch in on that. Uh, no, thanks for that explanation, Mr. Howalt. It all makes sense to me. Um, commissioners? Uh, Mayor, way over to you. Uh, Commissioner Lovett. No, I appreciate that, and I, I, I think it's a great idea. Do we have a time frame, and how will this uh, correlate with, as we're also reviewing our, our codes now? Um, Ms. Burrows. So what, will it all work together? Yes, so it'll, um, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, Commissioner Lovett, it'll all happen at the same time when we're going through the code. Um, these, uh, the Municode team will work with a city attorney. Um, um, so I'm, I would imagine, I, they haven't given us a timeline for it. I'm thinking probably 60 days or so from when we uh, approve moving forward for that. Um, and we'll be continue to work with uh, building safety and others on the various sections of the code that we'd like to see changes made to as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. That's all I have. Thanks, here. Commissioner Lovett. Commissioner Garza, did you have a comment or a question? No, no, I was just uh, making a comment about the uh, much needed uh, mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. change. Thank you. Any, we'll make uh, a motion we approve. Second. We have a motion to approve uh, from Commissioner Lovett. The second came from Commissioner Garza. Commissioners, please vote. The vote is unanimous. The motion is carried. Thank you. Item two under new business is request for approval to appoint one citizen member to serve on the Civil Aviation Board. Ms. Burroughs? Yes, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Um, we uh, have uh, uh, Mr. Donnie Llewellyn's term on the Civil Aviation Board, which expired in March of uh, this year. The position was advertised with the local news media. Mr. Llewellyn has served to apply to serve another term, and uh, Mr. Matthew Elbus has also applied for that position. And I, I don't know if Mr. I don't see Mr. Llewellyn in the audience. I, I don't either. Uh assume we would have been notified if he's joined us virtually or by phone. Um, I do see Mr. Elbus is here. Um, so let's, uh, let's give the floor to Mr. Elbus if you would like to come forward, please, sir. Sure. Anytime we're talking to uh, citizens that are w wanting to serve on our boards and committees, we, we start with thank you because uh, we, we need citizens to, to serve and, and and help make the process better. So thank you for your willingness, uh, Mr. Elvis, and uh, we'll give you the floor. All right, well, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners, thank you uh, for affording me the opportunity to come here and talk to you. Um, aside from what I put in the application, which speaks to experience and knowledge that I've gained over the last 10 years working in aviation, I kind of just wanted to spend a second and talk about the why. Um, my wife, Rachel, and I moved here about three and a half years ago. And since then, it's, with every move, it always takes some time to get like your feeding underneath you, get your bearings straight. Uh, but quickly we realized just how much Clovis and the greater community has to offer, whether it's employment or um, placement, training, education. And I think of all those things uh, that I could list, I'd say friendship uh, and personal relationships is one of the biggest things that we'll take away when we leave here. With all that being said, um, and everything that's been afforded to me while, while I've been here, I've been trying to rack my brain on how I can serve back to the community. And I really haven't had a good opportunity to come up with something uh, until I saw the opening on the Civil Aviation Board. So uh, with that being said, I thought with my breadth of experience and the knowledge I can bring forward, I thought this would be a great opportunity uh, for me to apply. So that's really all I wanted to talk about. Uh, I, I know it says on the application uh, that it's got me as the Air Force, and I think some of the questions was, 
are you active duty? Yes, I am. Um, and then that also comes with deployments as well. So if you have any questions about like how that might work or the dynamics, I'd be happy to, to speak to as well. Great. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Commissioners, comments or questions? Do you have any idea how long you'll be stationed here? Or Yeah, so actually uh, my wife is uh, fixing to take a position here as well. So it's going to extend our stay in about two years. So two to three years is what I'm looking at. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, other questions or comments? Uh, again, appreciate your willingness to serve. Um, you, you hit on something. Uh, you said deployments. Um, yeah. You know, we have a... Uh, the Civil Aviation Board meets monthly, I believe, um, but we've all learned how to meet virtually and so forth, so if you were on a deployment, could you join a meeting virtually? Yeah, absolutely, and that's the thing with, with deployments, uh, you're in totally different time zones, it's day there, it might be night here, and vice versa, so even if that's not a potentially an option, you know, doing teleconferencing, video, whatever it is, by phone, uh, email correspondence, phone calls are always always available as well, so... There's absolutely no reason I couldn't make that work. Great. And in your application, you talk about your uh, your experience uh, flying in and out of many airports, inclu including ours. I just wanted to make sure uh, I understand and that the commission understands. You you have flown in and out of Clovis Municipal, or excuse me, Clovis Regional Airport. Yeah, both as a passenger and, and a pilot. So. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, anything else for Mr. Elvis? No. Just, okay. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. appreciate Thank you, sir. Thanks for applying. Yep. Thank Thanks you. for applying. And um, just to make sure we don't have Mr. Llewellyn either on the phone or virtually. And Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners, Vicky did contact everybody this, for the meeting this evening. Okay. Um, commissioners, uh, unless you have uh, comments or questions on either of these applicants, let's vote. And we're voting by a paper ballot. Mayor, Mayor, Pro Tem and Commissioners, Mr. Matthew Elbus has been appointed to serve on the Civil Aviation Board. Thank you. Congratulations, Congratulations. Mr. Elbus. And, and uh, we, again, thank you for your willingness to serve. And um, obviously, we also thank Mr. Donnie Llewellyn for his years of service on the board and know that he's still a, a, a friend of Clovis uh, Regional. And um, uh, thank him for all of his years of service. But again, congratulations, Mr. Elbus. All right, next. We have uh, item three under new business is request for approval to appoint one citizen member to serve as a bank finance accountant representative on the economic incentive board. And uh, for this, Ms. Burroughs. Yes. Thank, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Uh, Ms. Megan Parler uh, resigned from the um, Economic Incentive Board when she became a city commissioner. Um, the position, uh, that's, that was, a, uh, she served for district uh, four city commissioner. The position has been advertised in Ms. Marley Rainey and Mr. Alan Kinland have applied to serve as a representative for bank finance accountant on the EIB. And um, so a, a vote is therefore needed. I'm seeing Marley Rainey. Uh, oh, there's Mr. Kinland. Sorry, Mr. Kinland. So they're both here. Thank you, Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem Commissioners. Thank you, Ms. Burroughs. So, of course, we're talking about, as uh, Ms. Burroughs said, the position that uh, Commissioner Paula held previously on the Economic Incentive Board. And uh, we have their applications in, in our packet here. They're both here. Uh, uh, I would say let's go alphabetical, but let's, let's go ladies first. Ms. Rainey. <laughs> and thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you for applying. Yes. 
Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Commissioners. Um, I'm Marley Rainey, and I'm applying for the EIB board and the position for the finance, accounting, et cetera. And my experience is um, for the last 11 years, I've been a financial advisor with Contemporary Benefits, LLC. Um, I've helped with life insurance, health insurance, and wealth management uh, with my securities licensing. I also have experience in accounting and bookkeeping services for the last 25 years. Um, I've worked bookkeeping services in many types of retail and service industries. Uh, anything from a doctor's office, real estate, insurance professionals, construction and development companies, oil and gas industry, various retail stores, maintenance services, and restaurant services. So I feel like I would be able to analyze financial data uh, for any industrial, economic, commercial, or business that's requesting and applying for economic development and incentive projects. Uh, for the last four years as well, I have served on the retail committee at the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I have a heart for uh, retail recruitment and I want the quality of life improved in Clovis any way we can do that for our current and future residents. Um, I'm excited um, about mayor and the city's um, agenda for the retail strategies and the current recruitment and retention programs that y'all guys have for business. Um, I would also like to help businesses in our community recover from the effects of COVID. Um, I've been instrumental in helping businesses apply for the recent CARES Act, PPP, SBA grants, et cetera, um, because these businesses needed some much needed money and funding. Um, I want to be a part of the current and future residents of Clovis to increase our community's sustainability and help Clovis thrive. I want to serve the community in a meaningful way by improving the quality of life by assisting in recruitment of retail and industrial industry. I'm a lifelong resident of Clovis, um, five generations on my mom's side and four on my dad's side. And so I'm here for life, <laughs> and I want to serve my community in a meaningful way. Uh, to be super honest with you, I just love Clovis. And um, this regional community uh, means a lot to me, and it's bigger than I can put in words, honestly. And so I appreciate the opportunity to be considered for this position. Thank you. We appreciate your willingness to serve. Uh, commissioners, any comments or questions for Ms. Rainey? Thank you, Marty. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. For applying. Appreciate that. Thank you for applying. <laughs> Mr. Kinlan. I'd also like to thank you for your willingness to serve. Appreciate you uh, uh, putting in an application, and we'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you, Mayor, Mo Mayor Morris, um, commissioners. Uh, I'd like to start by saying, you know, the EIB board was something that I wasn't familiar with uh, initially, and I was when I was brought to uh, look at the opportunity, I I took a deep dive into what the board does. Um, I'm a native New Mexican, been in Clovis for the last eight years, and um, if, am I? Oh my gosh, I'm a financial advisor with uh, Edward Jones, and apparently I'm a little nervous. And so, um, but I think some of the strengths that, you know, I would bring to this board is in my, in my operations through my business, I am specifically built and trained to evaluate risk, um, both in financial and capital markets. We look through municipal um, financing, credit rating and debt. And I think that those are the things after reviewing the EIB board and, and why it was created and how it serves you as a commission was some of the most important pieces to that. And so I think from a professional standpoint, I have the, the training um, to do those things. But really the reason I decided to, put, to, to attempt to, to join the board is because I chose to put my business in Clovis. I could have opened my office anywhere in the country, 
And I decided that Clovis was going to be the place where I wanted to start my business, where I wanted to raise my family. And I think that moving forward, the opportunity to be able to be on a board and, and help you guys make tactical decisions on specific financial decisions that are going to impact our community forever is, is really important. And those are the reasons that you know, I decided this, this would be a, something that I, I think I could help serve you as uh, the commission and, and the city of Clovis in general. So stand for any questions. Well, we, we appreciate that, Mr. Kinlan. Do we have any questions or comments for Mr. Kinlan? You did such a great job. There's yeah, no thanks. questions or comments. <laughs> yeah. So thank you once again yeah, for your willingness, you. uh, commissioners. Uh, let Let's vote by by paper ballot. I I, I would just I want to mention. I know Alan and Marley both personally and have served with them in various other ways around the community. And and uh, the two of you make this a tough decision for for this commission. That's for sure. I totally agree on that. I would concur, Mayor. Both quality candidates. Right. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners, Mr. Alan Kinland has been uh, selected to serve as the Accounting Banker Representative for the EIB. Thank you. Burroughs, congratulations, Mr. Kinland. I uh, appreciate your, your willingness to serve. We look forward to your service on the EIB board. Ms. Rainey, thank you so much for your willingness to serve, and, and, and we know that uh, you, you're serving in, in many, many places, and including helping the city with a lot of things, and so uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioners, next is uh, another tough decision to make. Where uh, item four under new business is request for approval to appoint one citizen member to serve as the industry representative on the economic incentive board. And uh, Ms. Burroughs. Yes, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Commissioners. Uh, due to the passing of Mr. Hoyt Patterson, there's a vacancy on the EIB for the industry appointment, and um, Mr. T.J. Curtis and Mr. Matthew Glenn have applied to serve after it was advertised in the news media. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burroughs. Uh, commissioners, many of you may have heard from Mr. Curtis, as I did. Um, he, he put his application in. Uh, he did send an email explaining that, that he had to choose uh, between uh, being here tonight or uh, getting to go watch his, his kids play basketball, I think it was. And so he, uh, you know, not only did he apply, he, he expressed his uh, sincere desire to, to, to earn the position, uh, but uh, indicated that he needed to go watch his kids tonight. So I know he's not here and hasn't joined us by phone or virtually, but we do have Mr. Matthew Glenn here in person. We appreciate your patience, and we'd, we'd have you come forward. And, and uh, we'd, we'd love to hear from you, sir. And again, thank you from the very beginning. Thank you so much for your willingness to serve. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. Well, I, I got here just a little bit early, and I got to see just a small part of what it takes to start this process. And uh, I hope everyone starts to understand the kind of machine it takes to run Clovis. And so thank you to everybody who is, uh, keeps <coughs> Clovis running, keep Clovis moving forward and keep progress moving. So thank you to all of you guys. Um, I had a little bit of time to think about uh, what I wanted to say here tonight. First off, uh, being in the industry, I'm a business person, not a politician. So when I come to these meetings, it's going to be making the decisions for the betterment of Clovis. Um, sometimes that means 
whether I agree with something or not, if it's best for Clovis, that's what needs to happen. And uh, my knowledge in the industry comes directly from building. Um, I build hotels, restaurants, retail, water projects, nuclear projects, uh, dairy. Uh, in the last 66 years of our company, there's not much we have not done. And those are the kind of projects, any projects, that we'd like to bring to Clovis. So my expertise, if you want to call it that, would be coming from speaking to contractors, uh, architects, engineers, owners, um, uh, sitting in projects for design build, for building information management, uh, just getting someone interested to build something and getting the process moving, keeping projects under budget, whether that's with my material only or whether that's across the board with other projects, rather uh, parts of the project. Um, so the other part of this is, is teamwork. A lot of people use that. It takes all of you to make this work. So on, that, on the board, uh, all of us would have to work together to bring something to you guys. And regardless of what, of what happens, if you approve something, then great. Next day we go out and work for something else. If we come and bring something to you and you deny it or don't approve it, then great. Next day we go out and work for something else. Um, and that's, that's how we make progress. That's how we keep things rolling. And that's, that's what I want to bring to this. I want, um, everyone's talked about family. I've got a family now. He's 20 months old. He'll turn 20 months old Saturday. So uh, I'm looking forward to those basketball games and all those kind of sports. Uh, right now I'm looking more forward to sleeping more. <laughs> so, um, so if I fall asleep during, if I get elected, if I fall asleep for the meeting, just understand I've, uh, I've got a little one that keeps me up at night. Um, so, like I said, that's that's how I bring I, I bring uh, what I know to everybody and and make it work. Because I, I want my son to stay here. I want my son to grow up, go to school here, and say, you know what, this place is awesome. I, I want to stay here. You know, I don't want to leave and go somewhere else. I want to stay here. That's the decision I made, and that's what I want him to. I want him to say, man, this place is awesome. I want to stay. So that's, that's great. Thank you for for sharing that. When I visited with Mr. Glenn and he was expressing his interest in, in serving, he, he, say, he, he talked about his son and he said that it, uh, having a son makes him think about Clovis and the future of Clovis like a parent thinks about things now and, and, and that resonates. I will say that you, you said yours turns 20 months on Saturday. Yes. Well, mine turns 17 on Sunday, and <laughs> you still lose sleep over them. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's true. It's a little different kind of worry. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioners, uh, w once again, uh, you know, I am, I am blown away by all of the folks that are interested in, in helping us and, and, and interested in serving on boards and committees, and, and this is another one that uh, makes it a Makes it a really tough decision, but we appreciate your your willingness to serve. Um, let's let's uh, take care of. of Just voting. one more thing. Yes, sir. Regardless of the outcome, it's not going to stop me from wanting to make this place better. So, I I believe that's right. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. <laughs> Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners, Mr. Matthew Glenn has been appointed to serve as the representative for industry on the EIB. Thank you. Outstanding. Congratulations, Mr. Glenn. Thank you.
All right, commissioners, let's move on to reports of boards, officers, and committees. I have a little bit to report on. Does anyone else have a report? You do? Commissioner Madrid, we'll give you the floor. You like? Monday night we had a meeting on parks and it was really informative. We had a lot of discussion on the master plan and, we had, and uh, the school was there too when they were talking about athletic organizations reopening. Claire was, open, was talking about that. And we talked about the zoo projects and we also talked about the Pappy Happy Museum out there at Ned Hawk Park that nobody really knows about. And we, we're going to try to work something out, see if we can get it. Next meeting we have, we are going to meet out there at Ed Hook Park and see if we can come up with something for that museum we have out there that nobody knows about. And it's, look, it's really neat, all the stuff that they have in there. And uh, so, let me see. Claire, was there. you want to say something about the Pappy Museum, Claire? Um. Since that meeting, uh, commissioners and uh, four commissioners serve on, on the Parks Board and uh, the Mayor was there also. Uh, we have spoken with John Ryan, who is our federal and state consultant, and um, we are looking forward to talking with him tomorrow morning about funding uh, from maybe the uh, cultural uh, department. Um, the, his wife was the secretary of the... Cultural Affairs Committee or the Cultural Affairs Department for the state of New Mexico and and that's who funded the the ranch um, Museum in Las Cruces, so uh, we're going to have a chat with them tomorrow morning and see what can be done to help um, Save some of the artifacts there at the at the Pappy Thornton Museum and the and the house the dugout and so on so that's that one and then if I may also while uh, while I have the floor um, we attended a, a meeting regarding the statewide comprehensive outdoor recreation plan and there's information on the city's website and on the city's Facebook about the survey that they're doing. It's, um, the website for the state is getoutsidenewmexico.org, nm.org, so if uh, the viewing public's watching and would be able to complete that survey. It's going to help the state do their five-year plan and uh, make sure that we get input on the east side of the state for things that we would like to see here. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Megan, do you have anything to add about the Pappy Museum? No, I, I do uh, am excited to go out. I understand that, that our next Parks and Recs meeting will be out at the museum, so I'm excited to see it and see the... Uh, farm equipment that's out there and the other um, artifacts that are there. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Megan. Anybody else? Leo? Um, I think it'll be a great thing. There's a lot of really old equipment and a lot of uh, history inside the museum there. And uh, a lot of things people have donated. And uh, it's really interesting. And it, uh, it, it'll really give people a, a lot of idea of what early Clovis was like. So. I think it's great. I think it's a great uh, thing to to see if we can't get it cleaned up and, and, and get it to where people can come and visit and, and uh, Joyce, uh, one of the uh, committee members, uh, used to take her kids out there to school. She's a school teacher and they enjoyed it and it, it, it's good to, to, to let the kids know what happened, you know, 50 or 100 years ago. So it's a great thing. Thank you, Commissioner Elliott. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Madrid. Appreciate that. Um, any other reports of boards? Okay, I wanted to report briefly uh, because I told you I'd, I'd keep you up to date. Uh, you appointed me to represent the city in the um, working committee that the county has appointed to um, explore establishing a land trust. Um, and um, we've, we've had the first meeting now and I can tell you, it's not an exploration. It, it, is, uh, it is a committee that's, that's tasked with the work of forming this land trust. And uh, the land trust is, is uh, very much about uh, conservation of groundwater. And uh, the land trust, along with Curry, 
soil and water conservation will um, will really be the the, the mechanism or the, the execution arm uh, of the overall project for the REPI program, the uh, you know Cannon Air Force Base REPI program is is where some money uh, will likely come in and can be used to secure some some groundwater. So I uh, wanted to let you know that, that that first meeting has happened and that that is very much the direction it's going. I don't know how or if at all the city will be involved once the uh, land trust is established. Uh, again, I'll, I'll keep you up to date, but it, it was outlined in the first meeting that over the next few months we'll be forming a new land trust. Uh, we'll be coming up with the mission statement, the makeup of the, the board, um, articles of incorporation, bylaws, etc., cetera, um, all, all to be done over the next, next few months. So um, I, will, I will represent the, the city's interests there and look out for the uh, overall good of, of the community. If there aren't more reports... Um, Future agenda items. Um, I just have a couple. We have the National Volunteer Appreciation uh, on the next agenda. And then, of course, National Day of Prayer is coming up um, at the beginning of May. So we have a proclamation for that. Arbor Day, um, there's a proclamation for that. Um, and, of course, Arbor Day is scheduled for the 30th of April at 11 o'clock at the Green Acres. And then... Um, we have two EIB vacancies that will be coming before you for District 1 and District 2. Thank you. Thank you. And also, uh, I believe at our next meeting, we may have a legislative report from our uh, city Mr. Lobbies, Ryan. John Ryan. Yes. Yep. A lot has happened uh, with the, the legislator, uh, legislative process uh, over the last uh, couple months. So there's a lot that needs to be processed there. Um, any other future agenda items? Okay, let's announce uh, date, time, and place of board and commission meetings. If you look at that list, are all of these still on as, as far as we know? Yep. Civil Aviation Board, I will meet at 5.30 p.m. Tuesday, April 6th, here in the North Annex. Water Policy Advisory Committee, 8.30 a.m. Tuesday, April 13th, here in the North Annex. Planning and Zoning Commission, 3 p.m. Wednesday, April 14th, here in the North Annex. And our next City Commission meeting is at 5.15 on Thursday, April 15th. I don't know how we had a Commission meeting on April Fool's Day, and then we're going to have one on Tax Day. But, uh, but we're going to be all right. I just wanted to wish everyone a, uh, a wonderful uh, Easter weekend. Tomorrow's Good Friday, and, and Sunday is Easter. I hope that you have a, a blessed weekend. And uh, our meeting is adjourned.